Uh, and now it's my pleasure to uh, w welcome and begin the last uh, section of our evening this evening. Uh, an award, uh, I'd like to introduce the award presenter for a young leader. She's a young leader in the Syrian American community who like the grantees that I introduced earlier <clears throat> is working very hard to alleviate the suffering of the displaced millions in Syria and to help them build a better future in Syria. Uh, Lina Sergi Attar is the co-founder and CEO of Karem Foundation, a nonprofit organization that since 2007 has been advancing innovative education programs, smart aid distribution, and sustainable development projects that are initiated by Syrians for Syrians. Lena is an architect, a little shout out to my Gensler friends here tonight, another architect, and she's a writer, and she's originally from Aleppo. Uh, from her home base in Chicago, Lena travels frequently to uh, Gaziantep, Turkey, in southern Turkey, uh, to oversee the activities of the Karim Fam Foundation programs. Karem means generosity and giving in Arabic. Through the generosity of the supporters for her organization, Lena and her team at Karam have an enormous impact today in Syria. And it extends also to Turkey, Lebanon, and Jordan, where many Syrian refugees have fled to. She's helping thousands of families there. And as the foundation nears a full decade of service, its programs continue to diversify under her creative leadership. So we're delighted to have Lita here uh, this evening to present the MEI Visionary Award. And she will speak, uh, I'd like to point out, tomorrow on the closing panel at the MEI conference, room, conference which will be held uh, here in this room. So Lena, would you? Please join me uh, to introduce our awardees. Thank you, Lena. Your Excellency Mayor Vera Baboon, Mr. Ra'ed Saleh, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. I am honored to be here and to present the 2016 Middle East Institute Visionary Award to the White Helmets formerly known as the Syria Civil Defense. I want to thank the MEI Board of Governors, President Wendy Chamberlain and Senior Vice President Kate Seeley for inviting me to be part of this special evening. And I wish to congratulate Mayor Vera Baboon on her award tonight. To be Syrian today means to be defined by loss. For over five and a half years, we have experienced every kind of loss. We are living through the age of destruction and death. We have been the become the country of millions of refugees and hundreds of thousands of dead. To be Syrian means it's almost impossible to have hope. The Syria Civil Defense, the group of 3,000 volunteer white helmets who run towards the bombs and airstrikes to rescue civilians buried in the rubble, represent hope in Syria. Every single day, they prove to the world the power of the singular act of courage in a crisis that surpasses in scale all crises since World War II. That act is the difference between life and death for a child, a mother, a family. They perform real life miracles as they practice their unwavering belief to save one life is to save all of humanity. Today, we honor these heroes with the Visionary Award, which is presented each year to recognize an Arab, individual, or institution for outstanding work in the region. To be a visionary is to have the courage to imagine another way forward, despite the fact that everyone tells you that is impossible, that another way doesn't exist. One of my favorite journalists, the late Anthony Shadid once wrote in the aftermath of the Arab Spring of 2011, in Assad, Syria, it still seems there is no imagination. 
It turned out the Assad regime and its allies were not the only ones without an imagination for Syria. For, over, for the past five and a half years, the international community, including world leaders, UN officials, and an endless list of analysts, experts, and pundits have been repeating to us that there is no possible solution for Syria, that there is no real hope for Syria, and that there aren't even any good guys left in Syria. The White Helmets, along with so many other Syrians who imagine, innovate, and create ingenious ways to survive in a brutal war zone, prove that that's just not true. There are real solutions that honor the Syrian people's voices. It's actually not too complicated to prioritize the protection of civilians. And there are plenty, millions, of very good Syrians who have been forsaken by the world. The world should not view the White Helmets only as heroes, but as true visionaries who imagine a Syria with clear skies, free of warplanes, bustling streets where children can play without fear, where millions of refugees can finally return home, where ordinary people can live in the freedom, dignity, and peace that they deserve where these brave young men and women can finally re retire their white helmets and build a new future for themselves and their family. Until then, the white helmets will continue to dig for life where innocent people have been left to die, reviving hope in the land of despair, and in the process, saving all of humanity anew every single day. MEI extended its invitation to the White Helmets in early February to be honored here tonight. The choice was right then, and it's all the more justified now. Since the volunteer group formed, the White Helmets have saved over 70,000 lives. They have also lost 150 White Helmets who were killed in the line of duty. We will be forever indebted to their service and their sacrifice. Their courage and spirit were captured in a recently re released documentary that you might have heard of. Ladies and gentlemen, for their courage and commitment to humanitarian service, rescuing trapped and injured civilians at great personal risk, and drawing international attention to Syria's tragedy, the Board of Governors of the Middle East Institute presents the Middle East Institute Visionary Award to the White Helmets. I invite Mr. Ra'ed Al Saleh, their elected leader, and my friend to come up and receive the award. Mr. Mohammed Ghanim will kindly interpret Ra'ed's remarks. مساء الخير جميعا أولا بدي أتشكر معهد الشرق المتوسط للدراسات للدعوة الكريمة ولا أعطانا هاي الجائزة Good evening everyone uh, first, uh, first of all I would like to uh, thank the Middle East Institute for extending uh, this very kind invitation to us. عبرهقنا بالليل وبالنهار وما عم نقدر حتى نقدر نتابع الأعمال اليومية بالإضافة إلى الاجتماعات اللي كانت محضرة بأمريكا. And I would like to apologize. I hope you uh, will cut me some slack today uh, because I actually did not prepare a speech that's befitting of this very um, uh, grand gathering. Um, unfortunately, that was the case because of the intense bombing and uh, the intense work schedule that, that we had. 
Uh, we had to work day and night, back-to-back uh, -back meetings. Um, so with all that, uh, with all that is going on for the past, that has been going on for the past two days, I couldn't prepare a uh, speech. The Medani Suri al Khwad al Bayda, who we better Amalu, Men Hawali, Tlet Sanawat, and also from Bidai al Fian Tlatash, Men Majmua, Men al Mutatawain, Men Khalfiat, Mahtelefi, Kano, Men Atoba, Men Jarin, Wa Mualimin, Wa Talab Jamiat. The Syrian Civil Defense, White House for Syrian Civil Defense, started as an organization three, uh, about three. Uh, uh, yeah, three and a half years ago, in 2000, beginning of 2013, uh, with a group of volunteers from different uh, walks of life coming together, different backgrounds, doctors, uh, carpenters, uh, educators, teachers, uh, you name it. حتى في منهم أعداد من كانوا مسلحين بالمعارضة المعتدلة بيشتغلوا وتركوا السلاح واختاروا طريق الحياة عن طريق الموت. Actually, some armed members of the armed opposition put down uh, arms and decided to join the, the team. حتى الآن وصل العدد المتطوعين لثلاثة آلاف متطوع منتشرين بمية وعشرين مركز بسوريا موزعين على ثمان محافظات. And right now we boast of about three thousand uh, volunteers uh, across Syria in about one hundred and twenty. Uh, locations or centers in about eight provinces. استطعنا إنقاز أكثر من اثنين وسبعين ألف إنسان، ولكن بسبب الاستراتيجية العسكرية اللي كانت تبع النظام السوري من ألفين وثلاثة عشر وبعد الطيران الروسي الضربات المزدوجة فأدنا أكثر من يوسف عوارمين شخص من أصدقائنا أثناء تنفيذ لمهام الإنسانية. We have been able to save about 72,000 lives since we began, began uh, operating in 2013, but unfortunately due to the uh, military strategy that the Assad regime has been pursuing, uh, and then the Russians uh, uh, pursued, especially with the double tap attacks, we've lost uh, over 140, uh, about 147 of our own members uh, in the line of duty. كنا نأمل نحن في الدفاع المدني السوري إنه نكون واقفين اليوم عن السلم الجائزي وقد توقف القتل في سوريا. And we were hoping that we in in the Syrian civil defense uh, would be receiving the word today, uh, but in different circumstances um, when when the killing uh, the killing has stopped. بصراحة من يرى بطولاتنا من يرى أعمالنا في سوريا ونحن نعلم أنها تحظى بالتقدير الكبير من 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 شعوب كثيرة ومن أصدقاء كثيرين حول العالم ولكن إن عملنا بالنسبة لنا هو مآسي يومية هو التعامل مع أشلاء ضحايا هو التعامل مع أشلاء بشرية تعامل مع جسس موجودة تحت الأنقاض مع جرحى قد وترت أقدامهم وترت أيديهم. I know some people think of of us as heroes and and what we do what we do as as heroism and I know that the work that we do receives a lot of recognition. But to be honest with you, the way we see it is it's tragedy. We every day. Uh, deal with tragedy, with torn limbs, limbs of victims, human limbs, limbs of human beings, with corpses, with people trapped under the rubble, uh, people who had their uh, legs amputated, their hands amputated. من يظن أننا نحن نعلم أننا فخورون بإنقاذ ثلاثة وسبعين ألف أكثر من اثنين وسبعين ثلاثة وسبعين ألف إنسان فخورون بهذا العمل ولكن كم شهيد دفننا وكم طفل فقدنا وكم صديق فقدنا وكم مستشفى دمرت وكم مدرسة دمرت وكم مركز دمر لنا. We were proud. Don't get me wrong. We're proud that we've saved about seventy-two or seventy-three thousand lives. But at the same time, we have also lost how many 
How many, uh, we've, we've, we've uh, buried so many a martyr. We've lost so many a child. We've uh, had so many a center destroyed, so many a school, so many a hospital uh, destroyed. المستقبل بالنسبة لنا هو لوحة سوداء لا يوجد بها أي شعاع أمل ممكن أن يتحقق بإيقاف قتل المدنيين في سوريا. The future for us looks like a black hole uh, with no uh, light at the end of the tunnel, no ray of hope of ever uh, having these attacks against civilians stopped. أنا آسف عن هذه العبارة ولكن فعلا كان هناك نقاشات جادة في الفترة الأخيرة بأننا لم نعد في الدفاع المدني نقبل أي جوائز في ظل استمرار القتل والتدمير في سوريا. And I'm, I'm sorry for the metaphor that I, uh, that I used, um, but uh, seriously, recently we've had serious uh, discussions, uh, internal discussions within uh, Syrian civil defense that maybe we should stop accepting uh, a words like these. ولكن كان هناك أيضا متطوعون يعملون تحت القصف في شكل يومي أصروا أن نبقى ملتزمين بعملنا وبتضحياتنا وأن نقف أمام جميع العالم لنتكلم عن المآسي اليومي التي يعيشها أهلنا داخل سوريا constant bombing insisted that we should remain balanced in our approach, pal balanced uh, uh, in our approach, the sacrifices that we make, and that we should continue to stand uh, in front of the whole world and address the whole world and talk to them about the daily tragedies that the Syrian people have to go through. وأفضل منبر ممكن أن نصل أن نوصل صوت أهلنا من تحت الأنقاض إلى العالم هو منابر المراكز الدراسات العالمية. And the best platforms uh, for us to actually relay uh, the, the, the voices of our people trapped under the rubble is the platforms of these uh, think tanks and uh, research institutes. ما نوع 40 ساعة مرت سوداء على سوريا الماضية. The past 48 hours um, have been really terrible in Syria, for Syria. وزعت آخر دفعة مساعدات في مدينة في أحياء حلب الشرقية. And the last uh, remaining rations uh, were given out um, in uh, the, uh, the eastern suburbs of Aleppo. لدينا 15 يوما أو 20 يوما لنعلن عن وفاة أول شخص بالجوع. So we're about 15 or 20 days away only from uh, announcing or receiving news of the death of the first victim of the starvation in Aleppo. دمرت ثلاثة مشافي في ريف حلب الغربي اليوم. Today, ريف حلب الغربي. Uh, today, three hospitals were destroyed in the western suburbs of Aleppo. دمر مركز التدريب الخاص بنا في ريف حلب الغربي. أيضا. Our own training center in the western suburbs of Aleppo was also destroyed today. دمر مركز الدفاع المدني في خان الشيح. And the Syrian civilian uh, defense in خان الشيح was also destroyed. لن أبالغ إن, قل إن, إن أخبرتكم بأن لم نعد نستطيع إحصاء عدد الغارات التي تنفذ على أرياف إدلب وحمص وحلب ودمشق وريف دمشق. It's no exaggeration to say that we are no longer able to keep track uh, of all the airstrikes on Idlib and Homs and uh, the suburbs of Damascus, etc. الصور التي وصلتنا اليوم من الوعر صور مأساوية صور لحرق جسس بأكملها بسبب استخدام القنابل الفوسفور. Uh, the images, the photos that we got today, the images that we that emerged today and that we got today from Al-Wa'ar neighborhood in Homs uh, are catastrophic. Um, and you know, people burned uh, alive uh, due to the use of uh, phosphorus uh, cluster munitions. الكثير منا كان متفائل في شهر شباط الماضي بإنهاء وبدأ عملية انتقال سياسي في شهر آب. Last, فب... Last February we were hopeful that maybe uh, a transition process uh, would be or could start in Syria by, uh, by uh, August. ولكن ما الذي حصل؟ But what happened? ازدادت عدد القتلى. The, the death uh, toll has increased. وازداد عدد المهجرون. 
and those displays, the number of, of the, the IDPs has also increased. And the number of targeted hospitals has increased. And the number of, the, of targeted schools has increased. And uh, truancy, uh, and uh, the number of kids uh, with no access to education uh, because of the targeting of schools has also increased. And uh, uh, I, both IDPs and refugees, their numbers have increased. Uh, the suburb, the Daraya suburb, it's a suburb of, the, of, of Damascus. Qutsaya and Hama, all three suburbs of Damascus were emptied uh, of their residents. That was, that, those were the uh, results of the so-called Geneva negotiations. And now, uh, we have about 250,000 civilians besieged in the eastern suburbs of Aleppo and uh, uh, facing the threat of uh, starvation in about 15 to 20 days. But in spite of all the pressures on us, we will not give up, we will not quit. There is a great uh, a word uh, that, we, that we get every moment we do the work that we do. And that's our motto. To save one life, is to save all of humanity. Shukran Jazeem. Thank you. <laughs> Guys, this was a great night. Amazing heroes, the white helmets, Vera from Betlah, thank you so much. Um, amazing work. Um, maybe I want to end this night with maybe a message of hope. We've been joking about what's happening in the Middle East, what's happening in your elections, but uh, uh, maybe uh, a little bit of, uh, of a message of hope. Uh, I know that you guys look at the Middle East and you think it's, uh, you know, it's hopeless, it's uh, make you a little bit despair. And you might be right, but um, remember like 70 years ago, Europe were killing each other for military fascism. And 100 years before that, they were killing each other because of religious fascism. We just decided to do both of them in the same time and get it over with. And uh, it is difficult and it's hard, but um, I just want to tell you that right now in the Middle East, more than 60 or 70 percent of the population in the Middle East are under the age of 40. Those young generations are, are not falling for the same obsolete propaganda techniques that their parents fell for. They are not buying into uh, the hideous propaganda that's been used by the authorities in place right now. Um, you, might, you might think that there is no hope, but if you speak to those young people, you realize that the revolution might be sleeping, but never dead. There is hope, and there is a whole new generation that is not giving up. And uh, I can tell you that uh, a revolution is not just an event. A revolution is a process, and this process can start by simply losing respect to the same mentalities that have been ruling our parents and grandparents for the past 50 or 60 years. They are questioning everything. Nothing for them is taboo anymore. And questioning is a prequel of a revolution. One common thing between religious and military dictatorship is they don't want you to question, they don't want you asking, because if you do, you're gonna undermine their power, their authority. Their authority is just based on a pillar of fake respect and fear. Fear is the secret weapon of all of these authoritarian regime. And I think this year, this election year, we have actually got a little bit of taste of fear and how it's, it's used. But uh, sarcasm is an antidote of fear because if you're laughing and smiling, you're not afraid anymore. And they hate that. 
They don't want you laughing. They want you afraid and frightened. You know, sarcasm comes from the Greek word sarcasmus, which means to flesh, to cut, to dissect. So maybe I have not uh, strayed too much away from my original job as a doctor. Uh, we use sarcasm to dissect, to find the truth behind this hideous propaganda that's been actually uh, defining many of our regimes in the Middle East. So there is hope. And maybe uh, the message is keep on smiling, keep on laughing. And I think you need this year uh, here in this particular country more than anything else. And you need to know about this like tomorrow. I just want to give you a quick brief about what's happening tomorrow. I'm going to actually speak in depth about that with David Litt from Funny or Die, who's also uh, the author of many of Obama's uh, uh, speeches. So it's going to be interesting. At 12.15, I'm going to speak about sarcasm in the Middle East. And before that, a very interesting uh, session called Rebuilding Alliances Containing Adversaries. You're going to have a Sunni, a Shia, a Jew, and an Egyptian in the same platform. So if you are a fan of WWE or UFC, you might as well come. And uh, of course, if you're on early risers, and at and, and, and nine o'clock, there is a session uh, called after the elections, or what the fuck just happened. <laughs> so thank you very much for coming here. See you tomorrow. Thank you very much. <laughs>